Hi everyone, today we are going to be working on the tutorial for the succulent pillow crochet pattern that I've designed. The pattern is available for purchase on my Etsy, it's a full PDF, and then this video is meant to supplement it. So in the pattern we use a size 6 super bulky yarn. Today I'm using a size 5 just for the tutorial. You're also going to need an 8mm crochet hook, a stitch marker, which is a preference because this yarn is super fluffy. And the step one of our pillow back is going to be putting six single crochets into a magic ring. So start with your magic ring. I like to keep it a little tight just so it's easier. And we put our six single crochets in. Now this yarn is really floofy and can be very hard to see the stitches. So this pattern isn't necessarily a beginner pattern. But I would say it is a little bit more intermediate just because you have to feel for the stitches rather than visibly looking at every stitch that you can find and it can be hard to keep track of you know what's what how many you've done so I definitely recommend using a stitch marker like you see here I have a stitch marker in the first stitch from my magic circle so I know where to begin round two and now for round two we're going to be doing an increase in each stitch around so six increases and then we'll see you at the end of your round all right and now for round three we are going to be doing a single crochet into that first stitch and then an increase and you're going to repeat this all the way around so six single crochets and an increase and each round has worked like this doing repetitions Alright, and now we're on to round four. So this round is going to be a repetition of two single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around. Alright, and here we are at the end of round four. Now we're moving on to round five. This is going to be three single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around for 30 total stitches. Remember, every round is specified in the pattern. So in order to make this easier, go get the pattern, purchase it, and follow along with me during this video. All right, and now for the next round, we are doing round six, almost done. So this one is four single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around, 36 total stitches. And now for round seven, this one is going to be five single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around. We're just making a perfect circle here, five single crochets and then an increase repeated till the end of the round. All right, so here we are at the end of round seven. This is what the back of the pillow is gonna look like. Of course, if you're making it with the size six yarn, it's going to be a lot bigger than this. This is just the mini version. So what we're doing now is we're gonna cut our yarn and we're gonna tie it off this little piece is now done for now, but we're going to make a second one that's identical to this first one. That one's gonna be the pillow front. So for that one, when you get to the end of round seven, don't tie it off, leave it attached to your ball of yarn, and we're gonna continue from there to combine them. So now, here we are, and I've made my second identical piece, but it's still attached to the ball of yarn. So that's rounds one through seven again. And now we're going to move on to round eight, which is combining the two pieces. So what we do is in the one that your yarn ball is still attached to, we're going to start by um, working seven single crochets into that piece that, um, that you're currently using. So seven single crochets are going to start the round. All right, 
And the next step is going to be chaining seven. And now the next part is going to be into that first piece that we tied off, the pillow back. So you want to make sure that you know what side is the wrong side and which side is the right side. That way your, um, your yarn tail from the magic circle is going to be on the inside of your piece. So now we're going to put the seven single crochets into that pillow back. So what you're going to want to do is take out your stitch marker. And then you're going to put your first single crochet into that spot, making sure that the right side of that pillow back is facing you. And then keep going across until you have seven total single crochets on that back. If it gets confusing, you can put the marker back in just to make sure that you're counting seven. This yarn is hard to use, so make sure you are counting every time. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, and then you're going to want to chain seven again. This is the second chain of seven. This is going to complete row eight, which is your first round of like combining them. So once you've done that, we are now going to move on to round nine. And this round is going to be 28 single crochets all the way around. So that first stitch marker that was on your pillow front, that is going to where that's going to be where you put your first single crochet of this round nine, which officially joins them into one piece. So now you can replace that stitch marker. This is now the beginning of your round and you're gonna work those 28 single crochets going all the way around. So it's seven in the piece, seven in the chain, seven in the other piece, and then a final seven in the last chain for 28 total. It's gonna to make a new circle. Okay, so here we are at the end of round nine. You just put a single crochet all the way around. So we're gonna continue working to make the leaf tip shape going so it's not too complicated. It's kind of weird in the pattern to read it, but visually I think it's really easy. We're just making a little cone shape off of our two main pieces. So now we're going to continue with this and we're going to start with our decreases. So it's seven single crochets, one decrease, three single crochets, and one more decrease. This... Okay, and now round... 11 is going to be six single crochets, one decrease, two single crochets, and another decrease repeated twice around for 20 total stitches. So this part is complicated. Highly recommend purchasing that pattern so you have it written down. And here we are, end of round 11. Now we're going to do round 12. Five single crochets, one decrease, one single crochet, and one decrease repeated around twice for 16 total stitches at the end. All right, and now for round 13, we're going to do four single crochets and two decreases, and you're gonna repeat that twice. Four single crochets, two decreases and repeat for a total of 12 stitches. All right, now for round 14, this one doesn't have a repeat. You just do all the stitches all the way around. So it's one decrease, two single crochets, two decreases, two more single crochets, and one final decrease. This is eight total stitches. So definitely check out the pattern round 14. Make sure you have all your stitches correct. And now for round 15, this is the final round of the leaf tip. This one's super easy. It's just four 
decreases worked all the way around. So for total stitches, you just decrease four times. And that's going to be the last round we work in this leaf tip. Okay, so once you've done your last decrease, we now have to do a little bit of sewing just to close it off. So you're going to want to do a slip knot just to knot it or cut and pull your yarn through. And then you're going to want to grab your tapestry needle and, um, or you can use your crochet hook. Sometimes I do both. You're going to want to weave your yarn tail through the front loops of each of those last four stitches so you see me doing it weaving that tail through the front loop of each stitch this is just how we're going to close that little hole in the tip of the leaf and then you just want to pull it tight and then use your tapestry needle to get that yarn tail onto the inside of your piece. You wanna weave it in so that you don't see it in the finished piece. So I just put it through the very like center of those last four stitches and pull it through to the inside. And then you wanna knot it so that nothing comes undone, so that no stuffing gets leaked out later. And then you could cut the tail so that it's not so long and obnoxious. So this is what the piece looks like so far after just making one of the leaf tips. So now what you wanna do is you're gonna repeat this process of doing the seven single crochets, the chain, seven crochets, chain. You wanna do that going around five more times so that you have six total leaf tips. So I'm gonna show you how to do one more so it's not confusing. So what you want to do is make a new slip stitch or make a slip knot with your yarn and right next to where you did your single crochet in either side of the piece, right? You're going to want to put another single crochet in the next stitch over from the last leaf to continue going around. So you're going to do seven single crochets in your first piece and then make sure you put a stitch marker in that first single crochet so that you know where your rounds gonna begin and then do your chain seven like you did earlier And now we're gonna go back into the second piece. So this is a little bit harder. So that's where you had your single crochet from your last leaf tips. So you're gonna count over from that seven stitches so you know where to put this next single crochet. So I have seven, and you're gonna to wanna to put your single crochet there and then work to the left from there. All right, and this is my seventh single crochet, so it's going into that space right next to the last leaf tip. And then you continue doing your chain seven to finish off the round. So this just shows you how we're going to work going around the piece to finish off the base of the pillow. And from here, you're just gonna wanna repeat the same rounds to finish off the leaf tip, working all the way around, knotting it, cutting off your yarn and you can do this for a total of six times. So let me just show you where you're gonna sort of do all of them. This is your first leaf tip 
and then two, three, four, five, six. So every seven stitches is going to be a new leaf tip. All right, so now I've completed all six of my leaf tips. And for the seaming, I flipped my piece inside out just so that it's a little bit easier. Uh, so you're going to want to sew the gaps between each of the leaves just along that like seven chain edge. So here I've sewn the gaps between all of them. You can see they're all stitched here, except for the very last one I left open so that we can stuff the piece. So in order to do that, I'm going to flip my piece back so that it's right side out. All the tails are on the inside. Okay, and then you're going to want to grab some polyfill or whatever you like to use to stuff your pillow before we seam the very final gap between the leaves. So I use the polyfill, fiber fill, the super soft like acrylic stuff because I like a big fluffy pillow, not a crunchy pillow. Um, you don't need a lot of stuffing if you're making this mini one. If you're making the full size one, it's probably going to take about a full like 32 ounce bag of stuffing. So I like a really stuffed pillow. I don't like them too squishy, but that's just a personal preference. Uh, so here I'm just stuffing each leaf tip because you want to make sure you get that shape. So I stuff it pretty good. Um, with the mini one, you might see a little bit of the stuffing peeking through because I'm using a pretty big crochet hook. I'm using the crochet hook that you use to make the full size piece. So in the full size piece with that super bulky yarn, you're not going to see any of the stuffing poking through. But if you're using the size five yarn to make the mini version, you will see a little bit of the stuffing kind of coming out. But I think it's a good size pillow, so I don't mind uh, seeing some of that stuffing. It's just sort of how crocheting goes. All right, and once you've stuffed it sort of to your liking, gotten the shape that you want, make sure it's the density that you like, then we're going to seam that last gap closed. I just want to grab like six inches of your yarn, an amount, and cut it off and weave that through your tapestry needle so that we can sew the gap closed. Try not to pick up a lot of the stuffing when you're sewing. Uh, you don't want to pull it out of the pill. You just want to seam along that chain seven edge. And it's not really a big deal how neat you do this because it is a velvet yarn. It is fluffy. You're not really going to see the like seam type stitch. It's just going to blend into the rest of your pillow. So don't worry about it too much just seam quickly, seam as much as you'd like to do, but don't put a lot of effort into it. You're not really going to notice it. Okay, and once you've finished, you're just going to knot it so that your seam doesn't come undone. And then you're going to want to weave that end into your pillow somewhere just to hide it. So this is what your pillow is going to look like so far. As a note, in the pattern, there's a step 23 here, which is where you wrap the yarn between each of the leaf tips and pull it really tight, which helps make the leaf shape more pronounced. And in the full size pillow, I definitely recommend doing this. Don't skip this step. But in the miniature pillow, I find it kind of unnecessary and I want a little bit of fluffier pillow. But if you're making it the full size like it is in the photos, like it is in the Etsy ad, do this step 23 of the pattern, do the yarn wrap, it will make your pillow look prettier. Okay, so now we're moving on to making our second round of leaves, which happens totally separate from our pillow. So we're gonna make five leaves that go all the way around placed sort of in the middle of your pillow. 
So what you're going to want to do here is toss your pillow aside for a second and we're going to make these leaves. So you want a new piece of your yarn. You're going to make another slip knot. And this one isn't worked exactly the same. So our first step is slip knot and then you chain 12. So you got one, two, three, four, Okay, now we're going to join to the beginning of the chain so that this becomes a circle so that we can work it in a round, not row. We're working this in rounds. So pick up and do a slip stitch into the first chain next to your slip knot. So do a slip stitch here. This joins it for working in the rounds. We've made a circle here. So now we're going to put another single crochet into that same chain space we put the slip knot this is the first single crochet of our new round so we're going to grab a stitch marker and put our stitch marker here so we know where that beginning of the round is because this yarn can be confusing to work with so put your slip or put your stitch marker in and for this round which is round um still round one of the pattern technically because the chain doesn't really count so this is going to be a single crochet and then an increase repeated all the way around. So that makes a total of 18 stitches that you're putting into the chain. So now here we are, we're gonna do round two, working into that stitch marker. We're going to put, uh, we're gonna do the repetition of two single crochets and then an increase. So we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around for 24 stitches. And now we're gonna do round three Round three is simple. Round three is just 24 single crochets. So one single crochet in each, in each stitch going all the way around. All right, and now we're gonna start doing our decreases. So round four, six single crochets and then a decrease, and then two single crochets and then a decrease repeated twice for 20 stitches total. And now we're going to do round five, which is five single crochets, one decrease, one single crochet, and one more decrease repeated twice around for 16 total stitches. Now we're going to do round six, which is four single crochets and two decreases repeated twice for 12 stitches total. And now we're at round seven. This round has no repetitions. It's just one decrease, two single crochets, two decreases, two more single crochets, and one last decrease for eight total stitches. Consult the pattern, get the PDF, makes it way easier. Okay, and now for the last row around, last round of this second leaf, so we're gonna do four decreases all the way around. So it's basically worked the same as the leaves from the main body of the pillow. We're just making them separately. They're not attached to the pillow. We have to make five total and then sew them on later. So here is one finished leaf. So you're gonna to wanna to cut your yarn after doing that round eight and you're gonna weave the end through the four front loops of those last decreases just the same way you closed the leaf tips in the other leaves of the main body pillow. It's done the exact same way. So you grab the tapestry needle, thread your yarn through, and then weave it through each of the four front loops in order to close off the tip of the leaf. And then pull that yarn tail through to the inside of the leaf. Pull it tight, make sure there's no gaps. And then knot it so it doesn't come undone. And you can cut the excess of this yarn tail off. So this is what it looks like so far. It's just a little 
cone shape. Um, this next part, we're going to have to stuff it. So you stuff them to your liking, nice and fluffy. And then along that chain edge, you're going to sew it closed using a whip stitch. That way the leaf is its own separate body and we can attach it later to the pillow. So don't be too picky about seaming. You're not going to see the stitching of the seam. It's a fluffy yarn. Just stuff it to your liking and then sew it closed so that none of the stuffing leaks out. Make sure that your yarn tail is a little bit longer because you're going to also want to seam it to the pillow later and if you don't have to cut more yarn it's just more efficient so I always leave a long yarn tail uh, when doing the chain in the beginning. So we're going to make four more of these for a total of five that are going to go all the way around the pillow to create this second round of leaves. So here you can see I've made all five of my round two leaves so now we're going to move on to round three which is the final round. We're making three mini versions of the leaves we just made. This is going to finish off the pillow so let's get started with those. You're going to want to leave that long tail after your slip knot just like you did for the other leaves. So you're going to do a slip knot and then you're going to chain 12 just like you did before. And then you're going to want to slip stitch to that first chain next to your slip knot in order to join it so that we can work in the round. I know this is where it differs from the second round of leaves. We're going to work all the way around. We're going to do two single crochets and then an increase repeated four times. So it's a little different. So you do your first single crochet into that same chain as your slip stitch. Mark it so you know where the beginning of your round is and then do the repetition of two single crochets and then an increase for a total of 16 stitches. All right, and now for round two. So we're going to take out our stitch marker and work three single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around. And then you're going to do round three, which is just 20 single crochets, one in each stitch going all the way around. And then round four, this is going to be six single crochets and two decreases repeated twice for 16 total stitches. And here we are at round five. This is going to be four single crochets and two decreases. That combo repeated twice for 12 total stitches. And round six doesn't have any repeats. It's one decrease, two single crochets, two decreases, two more single crochets, and one decrease, so very similar to how we made the other leaves. And then the last round for making this leaf is going to be four decreases, so four decreases going all the way around four total stitches. And once you finish that, you're ready to cut the yarn and then make a little knot and weave the ends through the front loops of each of the last four stitches just like we did in all the other leaves for the other round. Then you want to weave that end into the middle of your leaf and then we're going to stuff these 
and then sew them closed along that chain 12 seam, just like we did for the other leaves. These are all going to be stuffed. Alright, and then to sew it closed, you're just going to use your tapestry needle and whip stitch along that chain 12 edge, just like we did in the other leaves. Don't have to be too picky about it, you're not going to see the seam. It's a fluffy yarn. Save yourself some effort. And then knot it, leaving leaving a long tail so that we can sew it onto the pillow later. And once you're done with this one, you're gonna make two more for a total of three of these little smaller leaves and then meet me back here for assembly. And here we are, I have made all three of my little leaves and I still have all five of the big ones for round two. So we're gonna start with working on round two of leaves, we're going to sew all five of those on first. So to get a general idea of placement, they're going to be spaced around the outside edge of the pillow, so you want them to almost peek over the edge to where the main pillow begins. I like to make sure that when I'm placing them, the edges of each of the leaves touch each other. That way there's no gaps. It just makes it look a little nicer. And I try to stagger them so that the point of each leaf is between the two points of the main pillow leaf, just versus having them perfectly lined up. It's more natural to have them staggered. And then I'll use a crochet hook or some tapestry needles just to hold them in place so I know where to sew the first one down. So using your tapestry needle, you're just going to weave that tail from your leaf through the needle and sew it down using a whip stitch or anything. Just make sure it's placed where you like it. You can always move it, but just hold it in a general spot and stitch along the chain edge of the leaf and into the main body of the pillow. This doesn't have to be perfect because it's fluffy, you're not going to see it, the other leaves are going to be in the way. You just want to sew enough of it down so the leaf isn't going anywhere. It's going to be a bit floppy because you're just sewing along that chain edge, but that's totally okay. It's a squishy pillow, you're going to love it anyway. And then once you think that it's attached enough, you're just going to knot the yarn and then weave that tail into the main body just to hide it and get rid of it. In this process, we're going to repeat for each leaf going all the way around. You can place as many of the leaves you want to get the right spacing for them, or you could just kind of guess and aim for it as much precision as you want to add at this point. So go ahead and sew the other four leaves down. And so here you see all five of mine have been sewn. All the edges are basically touching and there's this gap in the middle. And this is where we're going to put the third round of leaves. You just want to snug them in so that they're kind of offset, they look cute, and then you're going to start by sewing just one down like we did for the other round of leaves. So hold one in place, remove the other two, get that general positioning, and then weave your yarn through your tapestry needle and sew it down using the same technique as you did with the other leaves. 
just through the main body onto that chain edge and then knot and tie it off and repeat the same with the other two leaves to finish it off. Okay, so all the leaves have been sewn down at this point and there's just one final step that I like to do to finish it off. I think this step is really important in the big pillow when you're using the full super jumbo yarn. For this mini version, it's not as important, but if you're making the full size, definitely do it. So you grab like two feet of yarn and cut it and weave it through your tapestry needle. And you see here, we're going to sew all the way around these tips of the leaves together so insert your needle into one leaf right where it touches the leaf next to it in the second round of leaves and push the needle through to the other side. Pull your yarn almost all the way through and then take your needle and go through the next leaf right where it would touch its neighboring leaves on the side there. And you're going to do this process all the way around going through one leaf through the next one through the next one. This is to help keep the second round of leaves in place, keep that nice tight shape. It just helps not leave any gaps because they are a bit floppy with the way they're sewn down. So weaving your needle through each of them, we're gonna help hold them into place by doing this. All right, and once you've weaved it through that final leaf and back out where you started, Pull your yarn through and grab both ends of this piece of yarn and tie it together. And you're going to want to pull it tight, not really, really tight, but just tight enough that it makes all of the leaves touch each other and keep their shape. You don't want to squish them, you just want to make sure that they're touching edge to edge going all the way around. And once you like how tight it is, you're going to knot it and then weave those last two ends into the pillow and then you're all done. All right, and now your pillow is officially done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial making this pillow with me. This is the full size version that you'll make following the instructions of the PDF, which is available on my Etsy for purchase. And if you have any questions about the pattern or any of the products, feel free to message me on Instagram at Ariane Crochets. And keep an eye out for new patterns and new tutorials coming soon.